finally a break in the weather. Scott is in Cornwall, where severe weather has been lashing the rugged coastline, resulting in high numbers of seals being stranded along the beaches. I've just had word that there's a seal pup that's been washed up on the beach and the poor thing, it's in a pretty bad way. And that's a fairly common sighting down here on this wild and windy Cornish coastline where seal pups are separated from their mum and then it really is a struggle to survive on their own. Scott's had extensive experience working with seals after a stint at the Marine Mammal Centre in San Francisco. The centre rescues and treats badly injured animals found along the California coast. Hey Dan, so what have you got? Hey, we've just picked up a little seal pup from over there. We've just moved it up because of the tide, but uh, okay. we'll give it a check over now if you're ready to jump yeah, on Yeah, absolutely, yes. Dan is the field support officer for British Divers Marine Life Rescue, a volunteer organisation dedicated to rescuing marine animals found in distress around the UK. Just turn them around a little it's bit. It's like a young so. one. It is, yeah, quite small as well, so here we go. Just pop that towel over it. Oh, hello, beautiful. Probably about in the range of six weeks, something like that. I think. Yeah, you're quite a thin girl, aren't you? That's right. While I'm sitting on this girl, I can really feel how bony and thin she is. I can feel her ribs and her spine. She just doesn't have the fat coverage that she should at this stage in her life. The seal pup will have to be moved off the beach, but first, she desperately needs rehydration. Uh, here you go. Okay. All right, so sweetheart, this is not gonna be very nice, but it's all for a good cause. So we've got sort of uh, a nice energy drink there for her, yeah? <laughs> a, full of electrolytes and fluids. It is. Good girl. It's okay. There we go. Taking that quite nicely. And these rehydration fluids will help just give her a little bit of energy, perk her up a little bit for the journey to the seal sanctuary where we can get her some care and antibiotics. So the rear right flipper here is looking pretty good. Yeah. Can't really see any injuries on there. There's a tiny little graze just oh, yeah. here. And then same on this flipper here, a little bit of a bigger wound. Oh, out. Just there. Yeah. That's, that's that probably like a bite. bite. Sure, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 My heart really goes out for this poor seal pup. I mean, only a few weeks ago, she would have been with mum, getting a lovely meal of milk very regularly throughout the day. Then she got weaned and things have gone from bad to worse. She's not been able to hunt. She's been bitten on one of her flippers. Then she's been dehydrated, starved, and then thrown onto the beach. So life has not been too fair for this poor girl. There you go. That's it. I'll bring her here and over. Good girl. That's it. In you go. Here we go. That's it. The next step is to get this pup to the nearby Cornish seal sanctuary as quickly as possible for more emergency treatment. Perfect. Good girl. Oh, Tutty! Back in London, Scott's receptionist, Elle, is worried about her new family pet. Who loves her food? Dottie. Dottie does. I've got a new Daxi called Dottie. She's a rescue from Dogs Trust and she's four months old. Dottie, come on. <gasps> Where is it? Elle and daughter Lucilda adopted Dottie after looking after a friend's Dachshund and falling in love with the breed. Dottie, what's he doing? Oh, my goodness. The Daxi breed are incredible. They're little characters. They can be very stubborn. They're cheeky. They're energetic. And they just love to play. And the children love Daxis. You can pick them up, carry them everywhere. They can go on long walks, just everything. She is a big, big part of the family. But Elle fears the little pup may have had a tough start. I know a little about her past. She was found in a van at Dover docks with lots of litters of puppies that had come from Europe and um, it had been seized. With no details about her medical history, Dottie is booked in for an appointment with Vet Phoebe to make sure she doesn't have any serious health issues. You have to be careful, they've got very long backs. I want Phoebe to just check the length of her back and her um, patellas, especially in the back legs, and just check her out completely to make sure she's okay. Good girl. Back 
Back in Cornwall, Scott and Dan have arrived at the Cornish Seal Sanctuary with the injured pup. And waiting for them is animal care supervisor, Claire. Hey, Claire. Hi. How's it going? All right. Hello. So we've got a very beautiful female seal for you. Um, she seems only a few weeks old, really quite thin. Shivering. Quite weak, a little bit dehydrated with the dry eyes. And she's got a bite wound on her right rear flipper and an abrasion on her right foreflipper. OK. So now you've got to get her straight into the hospital. But first things first, you've got a, a very important white gown on for a good reason, haven't you? Yeah, so we'll just quickly test her for avian flu. Um, and once she's passed that, she can come straight up to the hospital and we can start treating her straight away. Nice. Sounds exactly what she needs. All right, then. Avian flu is most commonly associated with birds, of course, but seals are also a risk of contracting the virus. It's a highly contagious and sometimes deadly condition. So if this girl has it, then we can't risk taking her into the hospital and coming into contact with other seals. That's it. Thank you. So I know that she needs a name to go into the hospital and I just think she's so incredibly beautiful. Uh, there is a word that we can use which might suit her, which is uh, Gwynia or Gwynny, perhaps for short. OK. There you go, Gwynny. What do you think? <laughs> she says, I don't care. I don't care what you call me. I'm hungry and I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty okay? much. Well, now your name's Gwynny, you can come to the hospital. Hopefully that avian flu test has come back negative. Hey, baby. How's it looking, Claire? Yeah, it's all negative. So all we're negative? Ready to go. Awesome. Okay, let's get this girl into the hospital then, shall we? Excellent. Gwynny might not look too bad right now, but she might just be hanging on to that last little bit of energy to keep her going, but she could really crash at any moment if she just loses all of her energy. So it's quite important we move really quickly now. Okay then, Dan, thanks a lot. Okay, Gwynny, let's go. Let's get into that hospital, sweetheart. So, where is she going in here? Yeah, just pop her in here and then we'll just need to change her wellies. It's just a short distance up to the hospital and straight away Scott and Claire can start work on Gwynny. So, the broom technique, yes? Yeah, over the shoulder. OK. A weigh-in will provide important clues about the young seal's condition. So, including the cage, it's 26 kilograms. So, the cage is how heavy? It's 14 and a half. 14 and a half. OK, yeah. so that means she's... Hmm, 14 and a half, so she's 11 and a half? Yeah. But that's a very, very light seal, isn't it? Yeah, incredibly light. Yeah. At this age, she should be about 25, 26 kilos at least. So she's less than half the weight she should be. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice Gwenny. Well. Gee, you really have fallen on hard times. Let's settle you into your new dig, sweetie. Come on. 11 and a half kilos. She's one of the smallest that we've had in this year. Very, very skinny. You can see her hip bones and you can see her ribs. Uh, so, yeah, very malnourished. So, Claire, lots of clothing changes and boot changes here at the sanctuary. They're really important, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. We have to make sure that anything that she has doesn't get transmitted to the whole hospital. Mm. So it's very important that one set of wellies, one set of warm frogs and one set of jackets for one pup. Yeah because one set of germs doesn't want to spread to another pup. Yeah, definitely. All right, let's start your exam, sweetie, OK? It's all right, it's all right. It's OK. Very good. Okay. Okay, so, so first things first, I should just take a temperature, hey? Mm -hmm. All right. No one likes a thermometer there, sweetie, honestly, no one. <laughs> Gwenny, goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah, this heels do it all the time. Do they? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> No one can ever say that our job is particularly glamorous. And here I am at the seal sanctuary, scrabbling around on the floor with a colleague, uh, very close, very intimate. Claire's doing a fantastic job as I'm trying to take little Gwenny's temperature. And then Gwenny lets off an interesting noise. Definitely wasn't Claire. So just getting a temperature there, it's 38.9, which is actually quite worrying. The average temperature for a seal is about 37. So nearly two degrees above, that means that she is suffering likely with a fever. So she's even more unwell than we first thought. All right, so I'm just going to check all the flippers there, and I'm just going to check that wounded flipper. This wound does look quite a lot worse than it did on the beach. It's quite deep, it looks quite infected. So a little tiny bite there and a larger bite there, so I suggest that this is definitely a seal bite. It's a sort of a canine hole and then a premolar hole. So 
There's three deep wounds on Gwynny's left rear flipper, and they really look very painful and very sore. There's a little bit of pus coming out of one of them. There is a distinct possibility that little Gwynny could be suffering with a condition known as osteomyelitis, which is infection of the actual bone. Because these bites are so deep, they can penetrate right down and into the bone, and this could lead to a blood infection known as septicemia, and that could have dire consequences for the future of little Gwynny. So Claire, lots of these seal pups that come in have these pretty extensive bite wounds. The adults will defend their space and if the pups don't move out of the way or um, get caught in the middle of it, then they can be the casualties. Okay, so now it's blood sampling time. The concern of taking a blood sample from a seal is that you actually have to put the needle pretty much hovering over the spinal cord. Now, in a dog or a cat, you can take it from the jugular vein, so in their neck or in their front limb. That's not the case with seals, so it's quite nerve-wracking because you go in a little bit too far and you can irreparably injure the seal you're trying to save. Yeah, good girl. Excellent. Okay, good. <sighs> okay. It's always quite a nerve-wracking moment because uh, that needle is very close to the seal's spine. And the spinal cord is pretty important, I think we all can agree. So we'll send that to the lab and we'll just see how healthy or not she is and we can start a course of treatment. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay, so hydration time again. So, okay, come on. Fluids at this stage of her hospitalization are incredibly important, so it's only really once you're fully hydrated we actually develop an appetite. Okay, it's not very clever, is it? I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit concerned about her. Yeah. There we go. No, 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 no. Sorry, sweetie, you're not ready yet. She really doesn't look well at all. She's very weak, she's very flat, and quite frankly, she looks lonely and sad. And I really do hope that she pulls through. We'll be back soon. So now I'm down here in Cornwall, it seems like word's got out a bit that there is a vet for hire. So I've just had a phone call from a wildlife enthusiast who's got a couple of patients that he wants me to take a look at. Morning, sweet cheeks. Breakfast. Hello. Who's a good girl? Gary Zamet is the head ranger at Feed and Farm, which is dedicated to the care and protection of indigenous UK wildlife. Good morning, Rodney. He's invited Scott today to help with two of his rescue rooks. What are you doing? The great thing about rooks is they're intelligent, they're extremely affectionate, and they're one of our really beautiful native birds in Britain. Hi there, Gary. Hello, How nice are you? to meet you. Good to meet you, I'm Scott. Cheers. And who's this awesome yeah. creature? This is Rodney. So this Hello, is Rodney. A, one of our rooks that won't need any of your attention today. Yes, well, he's, he's looking fine. very healthy. I mean, it's very clear rooks are part of the crow family, aren't they, with magpies and ravens and things. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And so they're very, very smart, yeah. aren't you? And normally you think of them as a wild animal. So why is this guy on your wrist? Well, they're all rescues that can't be released. So this one was actually found when a tree blew down in a storm right. and he was the only chick found alive. And so he was reared from a tiny baby. So he's totally what we call imprinted, so he thinks he's human. Hence the My human mate. name. Yes, hence the human name, Rodney. Yeah. You're handsome, aren't you? Will you come and say hi to the vet? Will you? Oh, you're taking a little nibble out of the vet. Well, put luckily I'm not here him. to see you. Put your hand behind him, he'll probably step up. Hello, okay. mate. Wow, he is gorgeous, isn't he? All right then, Rodney, you're going to come and introduce me to the team? Yeah, here we go. Come on then. Come on then, buddy. Come on this way. Here we go. Come on. Hey. <laughs> Hello, guys. Hello, Sweet Cheeks. Come on then, what have they got for you? The first patient it's is right. a rook called Sweet Cheeks, right. who was rescued after living most of its life in a cramped cage. So if I can, I can just go. <laughs> Good girl. Gotcha. Good girl. Have I can have a little yeah. tea towel. Yes. Just cover her eyes. Yeah. That'll calm her down a little bit. Sweet Cheeks is probably one of the worst cases I've ever seen. When we got to the house to collect her, uh, the whole place was absolutely filthy. There was a cage jammed in a dark, dingy room with cats climbing over it. And when we got her out of the cage to have a look at her, we saw the deformed beak, the deformed legs and feet, and she was just a mess, basically. 
but I can see that malocclusion there and that uh, yeah. they're not actually lined up correctly, which is why we're uh, seeing this knot wearing down. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just need to trim that end off, don't we? Yep. Oh, girl. And just whilst we're there, can I just have a look at these feet? Oh, bless her, look at those. I mean, they are mangled, aren't they? Yeah. Poor little sweet cheeks, hey? Deformed beak, and then this uh, incredible disability of these two club feet, but it doesn't seem to be affecting her. She's eating and happy just like the other ones? Yeah, she's, she's, she took a long time to settle in, mainly because she was terrified to leave the cage that she'd lived in for eight years. So as this one's the one curling over the top, clearly it's not touching at all on the floor, which is why they're growing so long. But I, I quite like to have a cue as to how long a natural rook's nail is. So I might just see if Rodney wants to come and help me with that. Okay. Come here, mate. Can I come and model your feet? Never thought you'd be a foot model, did you? Hmm? Good boy. That's a good lad. Right, let's have a look at your nails. Okay. So just looking at little Rodney's nails, they're uh, about a centimetre, a centimetre and a half or so. So. That's a good guide for sweet cheeks, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do you want to do it? No? Okay, I'll do it. All right. Okay, good boy. Say to about there. Try that. Okay. Good. So poor little sweet cheeks is suffering with these very long nails because she's got these very deformed feet. She's had an awful life up to now until she's uh, come to be in Gary's loving arms. And the toes are very deformed. And so the nails aren't wearing naturally on the ground or on perches. And as a result, they overgrow, which is why we need to trim them. Good, that's, that's good, I'm happy with that. But then what do you think, eh? I think you think you probably could have done better. Eh? All, right. All right, so now for that beat. About there, what do you think? All right, sweet cheeks. That's it. Mm, I know, it's okay. This side is really off to the left here, so all that is just deviating off to the right, and clearly just not rubbing the way it should. Rodney, I'm trying to work. He wants his attention. I'm nearly there. <laughs> this is twinging my perfection gene, so I just want to make your beak look absolutely perfect. <laughs> it does. Looks so much better already. Look at that. Ta da! That's better, isn't it? Oh, I know. What do you think, sweet cheeks? I think that's a rock for unimpressed. Yeah, I don't think she's impressed at all, are you? Good girl. Good girl. Well done. All right. That looks a lot better. Oh, clip nails, sorted out beak so she can go. Good girl. Good girl. Well done. Come on in. Easy, easy, easy. There you go. Oh, that looks better, doesn't it? Ah, oh, thanks, Rodney, for the present there, eh? Didn't they say something about it's uh, good luck to be pooed on by a bird? I think that's what people that haven't been pooed on say. Yeah. Ow, that's not very nice, Nelson, is it? Gary's next patient for Scott is Nelson, right, who has a far more serious problem with his wing. There we go. And Nelson was brought here by a lady who found him just running along a road with one wing drooping. Um, and when she got closer, realised that Nelson couldn't actually take off. Nelson's wing just seems to have drooped more and more with time. And unfortunately, it's getting to the stage now where it's tripping over the wing, the wing gets tangled. And then you have the dilemma, do you just euthanise it or do you see what you can do? You just have a good feel. So you've just been trimming the feathers just because she's been tripping over them. Yeah, it just takes the weight off it a bit. It just feels quite wasted, so sort of a section of muscles called patagium. And it's uh, maybe it's been affected at some point, so rather than there being an obvious break, it's just weakness, and so the wing has just dropped down. Yep. But unfortunately, that uh, muscular structure also contains nerves, and if the nerves are irreparably damaged, then unfortunately never will this rook be able to use the wing properly. What I do think is that he suffered a neurological injury. There's something called a patagium, which is basically a sort of a thickening of nerves and tenderness structures that runs down from the shoulder all the way to the wrist joint, the metacarpal. And I wonder if he suffered an injury there, it's damaged the nerves irreparably, and now he can't move his wing properly. Therefore, I would actually suggest amputation, removing the wing completely. He's never gonna be releasable, but I just feel with the wing gone, his quality of life's gonna be better. All right, let's put this boy in the box. And OK. Get there she goes. 
Okay, Gary. Right. Let's go. The reality is it might sound harsh taking a wing off, but the wing's doing nothing at all apart from making Nelson's life more difficult. And Nelson could have another 30 years or so. So we want to make those 30 years as comfortable as possible. Scott will perform the delicate surgery with a new team at a local vet clinic. Come on then, Nelson. Thank you. Sit. OK. Let's go. Come on in. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Hey, gang. Hi, I'm Scott. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Nice Hi to meet you. Yeah. Uh, this is Gary. Hi, Gary. And this nice is my rook patient, Nelson, who needs uh, a wing amputation. OK. I think Claire's in the prep room ready for you, so if you want to go through, it's perfect. Great. All Thank right. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Come on. Let's go. I've drawn up the drugs ready to go there. All right. right. So Waiting to assist Scott are vet nurses Tash and Claire. X-ray and then prep afterwards. Well, hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Hi. Scott. How are you going? Hi, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Claire, hello. Hi, Tash. Hi, Tash. How are you? So this is Gary. Nice to meet you. And Gary has uh, a rook patient, OK? So Nelson needs a wing amputation. So if you pop him up there and say your goodbyes. OK. Uh, see you later, Nelson. Yeah, he's nice and calm. OK. There you go. All right. Okay. Take it easy. We'll see you on the other side. OK, no, All right. thanks. Cheers, Gary. Cheers. Where are you, mate? There you are. There you are. I've got you. I've got you. It's OK. 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 OK, I've got him. Got him? Yeah, got him. There he is. Oh, isn't, he, isn't he incredible? Yeah. That, as we know, anaesthetics and birds can be quite risky. This guy seems pretty chilled, however. Mm, so, he's really uh, calm, isn't he? He's really calm, and hopefully we'll all be cool, calm and collected. One of the big things with bird anaesthetics is that we need to just do everything as quickly as possible because they're very delicate creatures. We want the anaesthetic to be short and we want them to wake up quickly. So everything needs to move at pace. So this smells gross, all right? But then you'll wake up feeling much better. Which that seems pretty good fit, actually. So I'll let you know when he's going a little limp. I'll know that because he's really got good hold of my finger. <laughs> Are you that in? Yep, he's going a little limp there. With Nelson now under anaesthetic. Okay, all right, happy Tash? All right, let's go. Scott can get an x ray of the bird's damaged wing. That is just the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Where's this bit of bone gone, Nelson? Hey? Eh? I'm really perplexed by what I'm seeing because he doesn't have a part of his humerus. It is literally not on this x ray. It's so unbelievably weird. I really don't know why or how that's happened. All I know is it's going to make the amputation easier because he doesn't even have bone to cut through. So, happy days, but super weird. So, uh, ladies, a little bit of a turn up for the books in that uh, the humerus already has a gap in it. So, I thought it was very strange when I was feeling it then, but that's clearly why he's not been able to use his wing because no. it's simply not attached to the rest of his body. At least there's a good reason for it. Yeah. 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 And it means less yeah. work for us. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to get changed into my vet gear. Okay. You guys keep bucking. All right. <laughs> okay, he's stable. He's got really good sound, strong heartbeat. Regular. Brilliant. That's good. Good. You happy? Just pop the light there. Just turn the you ISO off that? if you think so. Seconds later, Nelson's heartbeat has dropped alarmingly. He's okay, quite right round the side. Just can't hear it. I'm struggling to hear. In Cornwall, the operation to remove Nelson the Rook's wing has taken an alarming turn. I just can't hear it. I don't know whether it's just my hearing, if it's that light. As we're desperately waiting to hear from Tash that so she can hear Nelson's heartbeat, just time starts to stand still and every moment feels like hours. I don't know if I can just hear machines. Can you yeah. Turn the ice off. Turn the off. Anything? Can you hear anything? Now that Nelson's struggling under the anaesthetic and we can't hear his heartbeat, we turn the anaesthetic off. So hopefully he'll start to lighten up, but it does take quite some time before we can hear any heartbeat at all. Happy? Right. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, my friend, I'd be much have much more finesse than normally, but this is not gonna be my prettiest 
I think Nelson was in a whisper of death, honestly. Like, he was just so close to not coming back. And anaesthetics in birds are risky. So I'll just skim there. Okay, so this will be the sore bit. Oh. Okay, right, I'm gonna Once put him again. up to three. As I start to move forward with the surgery, Nelson's anaesthetic again takes a turn and he starts to wake up. Is that the mask? Yeah. Okay. Right, put back in there, mister. We react by increasing the anaesthetic and then it goes down again, but it's a hell of a roller coaster ride. Okay, girls. Okay, you ready? Yep. Yep. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay, Claire, you still happy? Yep. So that's the last stitch, so let's wake him up. Oh, I don't know about you two, but I nearly had a heart attack doing that. Mm. <laughs> they are pretty, um, pretty scary anaesthetics, oh. yeah. Wow, we did warn Gary. I don't know if we warned ourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, it's supposed to be the harbingers of death. We want him to see the light, <laughs> come back towards the light. One. The shock sometimes that can kill them after the operation, right. which is yeah. the recovery is sometimes the more risky part, isn't it? Which is... Yeah. Nelson? Yeah, he's coming. He's yeah. coming. Come on, come on in. That was hellishly stressful. And honestly, I feel like we've literally saved this guy's life a couple of times during this procedure. And now, hopefully, if he comes through this anaesthetic, he's going to make a full recovery. Yeah. So I think we can all feel very proud. There we go. Hello. His eyes are open. Hello. His eyes are open. Hello. 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 Hello a surgery, it was absolutely right to do it. But to go through it with strangers, and come out of it with two new friends and a rook that survived without the wing that it didn't need, it's, a, it's an absolute miracle. So here he is. Looking a bit smaller. Yes. <laughs> so the girls and I have just completed an amputation, so you can just see the sight under there. The girls did an amazing job at plucking, wow. so. And Gary, I've got some very Odd, odd news for you, and that actually he was missing a piece of his upper forearm. So his mm -hmm. wing wasn't actually attached to his body. It was only attached by skin and sinew and muscle. But the bone literally disappeared. I don't know where it is, but it's not in your bird. But <laughs> after some, shall we say, anaesthetic challenges, girls, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Anaesthetic challenges, right. we've managed to get your boy through and we're just Brilliant. chuffed for you. We're oh, very, very proud of ourselves and of him, and now we want you to take him home and give him lots of love. Brilliant. That's All right. lovely. Thank you. Okay, let's pop you in. Good boy. Yeah. All right. In you go, lad. In you go, lad. That's it. Good lad. Good boy. The girls and I are going to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> pub. We've been promised a beer. Yeah, at least one. <laughs> You've earned it. Brilliant. All right. Thank you. Cheers, Gary. Love Good it. on you, mate. Thanks a lot. All the Cheers. best. Thank, Thank you. We'll come and visit him. He's only yes. on the road, so. Yeah, please do. Bless him. Cheers. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Okay. All right then. Come on, man. Bye, Nelson. Bye, Nelson. Bye. <laughs> oh, right. I'm never doing a rock anesthetic ever again. <laughs> Nor am I. <laughs> Although, can I say, girls, high five. Yes. <laughs> Back in St Margaret's, receptionist Elle is bringing in her newly adopted dachshund Dottie for an important first health check with Vet Phoebe. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> We've come to meet you today for our general health check. <gasps> Shall we oh come gosh. out of the bag? Let me How put exciting. the bag down and we'll get her out safely. Dottie's welcoming committee is practice manager Maz and receptionist Lizzie. Oh, you little sausage. Oh. Can I have a cuddle? Dottie, cuddle. <gasps> cuddle. Oh, I know. Dottie. Oh, hi, 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 hi. I think Dottie and I have stolen each other's hearts. There's something about her and I can see why Elle has just fallen in love with her because she's just got this little spirit and, oh, yeah, she's just delicious. Just delicious. 
The six-month-old rescue dog was found malnourished in a truck full of puppies that had come from Europe. And Elle wants to make sure she doesn't have any health problems. She's so thin, isn't she? I know. She was thinner than that. Really? Yes, she, yeah. She eats like a little horse, though. She's got a good appetite. Has she? Yeah. Good. Not everything. Ah, there it is. Oh, good girl. What's going on here? Who else is here? Oh, God, Who's this? Is, oh, no. I hope you've got waterproof makeup on. Oh. <laughs> Maz, move out of the way. I need some time. Go on, then. Go on, then. Oh. Oh, is she going to nuzzle under? Hello. Oh, come on then. Mm. Come in too, Elle. All right. <laughs> Come on, Bye, baby. Bye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Doctor. She's ridiculously cute. She's so cute. I'm going to wait here till she comes out. <laughs> right then. Let me have a little look at her. What we tend to look out for is if she goes in at the waist, which she certainly does, and you can actually see her ribs, and that means that she's a little bit underweight, so put on a little bit more weight and then oh, she'll right. be perfect, I think. I think she'll be happy with that. Yeah. Obviously, we want to keep her as slim as possible because um, it will have negative effects on her joints and things if she's overweight. So I assume she's been eating well then. Eating really well. Those lovely little teeth. Yeah, it looks like she's got some adult teeth coming through. No, how exciting. <sighs> Right then, time to listen to your heart. Here we go, you look at mummy. Hey, look girl. As Phoebe is listening to her heart, it all goes a bit quiet, and I'm thinking, what has she found? OK, Phoebe. Yeah. <gasps> that all sounds fine. Oh, good. Yeah, nice, regular rate and rhythm. So. OK, fantastic. Elle's quite clued up with dogs, obviously, from working in a practice. She knows what she's getting into, and she knows that Dachshunds have issues with spines as well, so that's another thing that she'd like me to check today. The most important things you can do at home are to minimise any sort of big jumps, so try and stop her jumping on and off the sofa and okay. try and avoid stairs if you can as well. Yeah. And the other most important thing is keeping her slim because obviously that will put less pressure on her joints as well. Okay. Because the spinal cord obviously runs all the way down the middle of the spine, sometimes they can get nerve deficits. So one of the ways we test that is by just seeing if she knows where her paws are. So you turn it over and then she corrects oh, wow. it. So she knows where her feet are. That's oh, a good, good sign. Thank goodness, Dot. Dotty, is it time to get back in your bag? Time to go home now. Oh. Oh, I'll go and get her bag, Phoebe, if you could just hold okay. her or not. I'm just gonna have one yep. last little cuddle. Okay. I don't know what it is that makes Dotty so cute. Maybe it's her massive ears, maybe it's her tiny little legs, or maybe it's just her personality capturing everyone's hearts. Oh, Phoebe, thank you so much for today. That's OK. Very reassuring to know that she's fine and all the things I need to look out for. Definitely. She's doing really, really well. I'm sure oh. she's got many, many happy years ahead with you. I'm sure. Come on, then, Dotty, let's go. There, you're going to stay in. <laughs> Come on, then. Bye, oh. Phoebe. Bye. In Cornwall, severe weather is continuing to take its toll on the local seal population. Scott has been helping out at the Cornish Seal Sanctuary Hospital, and rescuer Dan has arrived with another patient that needs immediate care. She's a little bit on the small side, just only 14 kilos. Here's oh, wow. her paperwork here from when she was picked up. Yeah, so she's quite a young one then. Hello, gorgeous. She is, she is. And what's her name? Her name is Fortune. Now, Dan, I must say, I've seen some varied coloured seals. I've never seen a yellow one before. She had a little accident in the cage on the way right. down, well, and she's covered herself. Right, a lot so, of people get travel yeah. sickness, yeah. so we won't blame you, sweetheart. <laughs> never mind. OK. So straight away, I can see a little bit of discharge from the nose there, so she has got a mild respiratory infection, it seems. Cold and flu season for us and cold and flu season for it seals. It can be, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then, obviously, by having a respiratory infection, they can't breathe properly, so they can't dive properly, so they can't eat properly which is why you then yeah. find them washed up on a beach. Yeah, exactly. So she's 14 kilos, she's about five weeks old now. She should be double that weight, ideally. All right, well, I think she's in desperate need of some hospital care, so uh, I'm going to don the outfit to uh, just do the quick avian blue test, and then we can get her into the hospital. Sure, great. Okay. Scott needs to check Fortune for the highly contagious, deadly avian flu virus. If she is carrying it, she won't be able to be treated up in the hospital. All right, so... <laughs> 
Oh, oh nice. Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was going to actually put a swab in her nose. I should have she's, just caught it with my she's face. She's giving you a sample. Yeah, it's... she really was. <laughs> That looks like yeah. it's okay, I think. Yeah, yeah we got inside. Yeah. yeah, good girl. Bit of seal snot, yeah? So there's a saying, make haste slowly, and that's exactly what we have to do with these rescue seals. Yes, they need urgent care, but if we rush them into the hospital and they have contagious diseases, they can spread it to some of the others. Okay, so very good news there, Dan. Only one line, so no avian flu. All clear. All right, yep. So I'm going to get out of this incredible outfit and uh, let's get her into the hospital, shall we? All right, we? let's yeah, go. She needs our help. Go around here to Auntie Claire. There she is. Hey, Claire. Hey. So we've got a young female. She's um, quite underweight and um, she's got a wound on her right hind flipper and she doesn't have avian flu, so Great. all good. Go, sweetie. Finally, I can get to grips with Fortune. Now she's able to be admitted into the hospital. I can check this poor girl over and see what injury she's suffering with. Yeah, she's certainly not got anywhere near the fight that some of the others have. Does no, she? she hasn't got the strength, um, which is probably because she's so skinny and not been eating for a wee while. Yeah. Well, the temperature's 36.4, so just slightly low, but uh, at least it's not high, so she doesn't have an mm -hmm. active systemic infection, so that's good. So this right flipper, straight away I can feel like it's very swollen and actually quite hot to the touch. Right. So no surprise if there's an abscess lurking in there somewhere. So what I found here is just the exit wound of a, what looks like a bite wound. So she sustained an injury while she's been out and about and then the wound's healed. She's then got an abscess which is broken open on the underside of her flipper. So just as a dog or a cat, Particularly cats get cat fight abscesses and they turn very nasty very quickly. The same is applied for little Fortune. When Scott first saw Fortune in the car park, he was concerned about discharge from her nose. Chest doesn't sound too bad. Mm. So I think it probably is an upper respiratory infection rather than a more serious lung infection. Yeah, sure, our breathing's not too laboured, so hopefully it's just minor. Yeah. Right. So, so hydration time. So we've got the same gap between the teeth that a dog has. So you're going with your fingers to get a warming tablet in. That hose must be quite uncomfortable, but it's all very important stuff, isn't it, to rehydrate them? Yeah, I bet it's not the most comfortable, but they'll, she'll thank me in the long run for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she'll be parched. She needs a good drink. Yeah. So now that we've rehydrated Little Fortune, the last thing I need to do is to give her some medical treatment. And what she really needs is very similar to how we treat a cat with a cat bite abscess. She needs antibiotics and she needs some pain relief in the form of anti-inflammatory. So I'm gonna give her two injections, which aren't very nice. They have to go into the muscle, but it's all important to get her to start feeling better. Okay. Well, Fortune, I think your fortunes are looking up, my girl. Yes. I'm really hopeful that she'll return back out into the wild after the infection's cleared um, and that she's gained that much needed weight. As soon as she starts feeding for herself and really, really guzzling the fish down and competing well with the others, I'm sure she'll be fine. Even though you're pretty feisty. But feisty's good. That's what we've learned. Yeah. Feisty's good. Good morning, Nelson. How are you doing? Yeah, here you go. Good. Next morning, Breakfast over at Feed and Farm, Nelson the Rook is recovering well from his amputation surgery. You're looking good, aren't you? Have some breakfast. Hey there, Gary. Oh, morning. How are you? Yeah, good. You're right. Yeah. How's my Rook patient doing? <laughs> Brilliant. They're really, really good. Right. Oh, he looks fantastic, doesn't he? Yeah, so much more comfortable looking now. Yeah. During a tense surgery, Scott had to remove Nelson's deformed wing. Today, Nelson is looking absolutely fantastic. You would never know that he's been through quite the bumpy ride that he has, and he seems fighting fit. That's it. And then there's that little suture line in there. Looking good. Very small, really. Yeah, I'm surprised how small that wound is. Right, mate. You can go and see your mates, hey? Go and find that girlfriend of yours, hey? Come on, then. Let's go. Good boy. Hello, team. Hello, Rodney. Hello. Hello, champ. Look, we got your buddy back. Look. 
Yeah. Hi. How are you this morning? Hello. Look. Look, it's Nelson. There he is. There's your buddy. There he is. Yep. All right, Nelson. You go find your girlfriend now, buddy. Okay. And there he is. Fantastic. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, so that, that's, that's his mate there calling now. Gary, thanks so much for the opportunity to perform this procedure on your rooks and, uh, and for sharing your passion because now, being with these guys just for a couple of days, I can really see where that passion comes from. They're awesome. That's great. No, thank you. I mean, Nelson there's looking great. He's going to be a lot more comfortable. Yeah. And uh, Sweet Cheeks Beak's looking great. And yeah, it is amazing how once you spend a little bit of time with a species that you might not think much of before, it changes your attitude. Mm. And that's the whole point of what we do. You all right, Rodney? Do you want to come home with me? You're pretty cool. And he is a bit of a star, isn't he? Oh, he's a ledge. <laughs> it's Scott's last day at the Cornish Seal Sanctuary, and he has a special treat for Gwynny, the first seal pup he helped rescue a few days ago. Look what I've got. Look, what do you think? What do you think? Oh. Ooh. Clever girl. Well done. Mmm, someone's got her appetite back, haven't they? It's incredible to see the wild instincts coming back through with this beautiful little seal pup. Gwynny's ripping away at this fish ferociously, just like a seal would in the wild, so I'm really hopeful that she is going to make a full recovery. All right, Gwynny, you be a good girl. Stay in there and get well soon. Good girl, well done. Good girl, that's it. Hopefully both Gwynny and Fortune will eventually be moved to these outside pools to continue their convalescence. Before Scott heads off, Claire wants to introduce him to Ray, one of the sanctuary's long-term residents. Ray! Hello, mate. He's incredible, isn't he? Yeah, he's great, so... Hello, big boy. And if you call him, you'll come a little bit Ray, forward. Ray, come here, mate. Here you go, big boy. There you go. Good boy, that's it. Well done. Good lad. Oh, he's such an incredible boy, isn't he? He is. He's a, a rescue from back in 2001. Um, sadly, we think he suffered a blow to the head before he was rescued, resulting in him being completely blind. Oh, there you go, mate. Well, certainly no issue with him eating, so he can feel the fish coming towards him with his whiskers, can't he? Yeah, exactly. And luckily, he recognises his own name, so we can give him a little bit of extra fish while the rest are busy eating. Well, thank you so much for that. That's such a special experience. I do hope that Ray looks after our little Gwynny. I'm sure he will, yeah. He's a very sweet character. Um, so he's... <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Come on. You better be sweet as well, hey? Her name's Gwynny. She's very sweet. She's very beautiful. <laughs> Don't be too jealous. All right, Claire, well, thank you so much for letting me come here and work with you. It's been amazing. Well, all thank right. you so much for all your help. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> all right, then. Bye, guys. Take care, Claire. See you later. Bye. It's been an incredibly special week being down here in Cornwall, a county that I absolutely love. And I've really reminded myself of just how feisty and fun British wildlife are, from the pecky rooks to the slightly snappy seals. And I think I've been reminded of how much British wildlife reminds me of British people, tough and resilient. And four months later, there's some good news from Cornwall. Gwynny has been nursed back to full health. She's put on weight and her infected bite wounds have fully healed. So today she's being released, along with six other rescue seals that have also completed their recuperation. It's the best feeling in the world. It sounds really corny and really cheesy, but when you see them when they're so ill or so vulnerable when they come in and you build them up and they, you're releasing them at, at 30, 35 kilos and they're just this big, healthy pup, it's just fantastic to see them disappear back out into the sea and hopefully be fine. Yeah.